Welcome to Co-op Mode, round 48. This is the official video game podcast of Secret Fringe Unite. I'm your host, Todd Oxtra, joined by the best producer in the land, the Canadian, <laughs> Mark Harriman. I don't know if I'd go that far, but I'm very, very happy to be here. How are you tonight, Todd? You know, um, I'm feeling pretty good. It, it's, Excellent. It's, it's uh, a Halloween Eve Eve that we're recording mm-hmm. on. Um, and I am just really still enjoying the, the spirit of Halloween. I love this time frame. Uh, you know, I got a little costume action going on. <laughs> Mark almost dressed up too. So, uh, yeah, I should have. That was, that was a funny way to answer the video call. Yeah. Todd in uh, a plague mask. It's pretty good. Yeah. yeah uh, it was fun. I was actually on busy. a uh, call. There was a, uh, we have this organization that I support called three boo, which operating unit but it's like because there's three b's to support the business so they call it the three boo three business operating unit and they changed it to b-o-o so very cute and they had a virtual (laughs) halloween party today so it was very fun cool yeah Yeah, so i like it yeah it's it's really fun um that we're in this mood um by the way uh are you guys doing anything special for halloween uh we were talking about that tonight so uh we did get the child and mando uh, costumes for Finn and I. You can figure out which one's going to be which. And uh, my wife is going to dress up in a very comfy, like onesie pajamas thing. And she has a um, a name tag and some mini ears. And she's going to be Disney Plus subscriber. And she's <laughs> just going to watch us. <laughs> that's very 2020. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so that's that's what we're gonna do. So, I think right now the plan seems to be uh, Saturday afternoon. I think we're gonna go out and see my grandfather, and uh, and then maybe stop in to see my parents and a couple of the houses up around there, and just kind of basically just show Finn off and how cute he is in his little baby Yoda outfit. Um, and then, yeah, I think just come back here and and hand out some free candy to the kids who uh here i don't know how it is in the rest of the world Uh, i know some places are restricting halloween some places are open to it um here we have well we we haven't had any cases uh in in a while so um so halloween's a go there are some still some very precautious uh restrictions so it's kind of like you know they're suggesting have a table or something where you can either place the candy or even some people are getting creative and having like candy slides mm-hmm. of like, you know, a little uh, way to get the, you know, the treats to the kiddos. Um, so I, I think we're going to have like a little table or something. I'll put that and then I'll step back and, and do all that kind of stuff. So it's going to be a different Halloween, but it's, uh, it's going to be fun. I, I love Halloween. It's my, one of my favorite times of year. So, um, so I'm, I'm not letting, the current world situation get me down. It's, uh, you know, we're still going through with it and, and being able to dress Finn up for the first time. Um, he's, he is actually, as of we're recording right now, uh, he is five months old today and we dressed him up in a little Halloween onesie to take the pictures. So, uh, after, after we finish recording, I'll be editing those and anyone that follows me on, uh, on social media, we'll see those pictures because uh, I I post them every month to see his little progress. So uh, we did a little Halloween shoot tonight and it got me even more in the mood than usual. Uh, What about you guys? What's your Halloween plan? Good question. So typically Halloween for myself and my wife is the day we just take, uh, we have a date night or date day. Typically we just go out during the day, try to do something fun, Halloween related. Uh, But unfortunately it's been ridiculously cold in Minnesota. It's like, we our 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 Halloween snow is finally melting. Oh <laughs> which no! Sucks. It's it's been lame this year. It's been like this is the worst way to do 2020, and Halloween is not e- exempt from it. But um, things are gonna look better. It's gonna be like in the 50s, so we might be able to do something tomorrow. We usually go to this this really cool arboretum that's that's part of the university system here, and they do beautiful like fall stuff, but they do scarecrows. So they decorate different types of scarecrows. It's very festive. It's very fun. Probably going to go out to uh, eat. And then, um, uh, you know, I, I think we will be hopefully having trick-or-treaters, and I'm just going to sh- uh, get a slingshot and shoot the candy at them. <laughs> I kept joking around that I was going to uh, throw our Halloween treats at kids, but every mm-hmm. time someone would ask, I'd say I was going to get cans of, uh, of pop or, or soda whichever one you prefer to say, but I was basically like, I wanted to, 
you know, joke around that I was going to huck cans of a heavy liquid at, at children. And, uh, the amount of people who didn't catch on to the joke was slightly worrying mm. to me. Like I had one person like, Oh, they have great deals on like Pepsi at this place. And I was just like, dude, I'm not going to throw cans at kids. Like this is not a thing. Um, yeah. So just, yeah. So some people just do not catch on. <laughs> Sorry. No, not, not so much. Um, but I guess my wife and son are the, for their Taekwondo studio. They're going to wear, be able to wear costumes for it. So they're kind of excited. Cool. About it. So I have to wear masks and socially distance, but I think that's, that's a, 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 just a fun way to do it. And I will probably have Halloween stuff on music and, uh, you know, maybe a bonfire Halloween night. So I'm going to we'll put see. you on the spot right now. What is your favorite Halloween song to get you in the Halloween mood? What's, what's your, if you could, if you only had to play one song to get you hyped up for Halloween, what's that one song that's going to put you in that mood? Oh man, it's got to, this is going to be lame, but Nightmare on My Street by Love D- it. <laughs> DJ Love Jelly's it. The Fresh Prince. Yep. What about yours? You gotta put that. Uh, mine would go like this is Halloween. Always oh, gets me. Yes. Always. Uh, I also like what is it? Uh, 999 haunts the like the one from the Haunted Mansion ride. Like that one. Oh, yeah. Like always, always gets me. Um, and Grim, uh, isn't that Grim Grinning Ghosts? Is that the, is that the same one? Because yeah, Grinning I think so. Like the, the cover of that, which is really? really good. Oh yeah, yeah. Come on, Mark. Hmm. They're your okay. people. I always just go for the original. I don't know. Oh, uh, check their their cover is fantastic. Grim grinning ghosts go out to socialize. Is that the one? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to look up the the actual name of it. I had it on a playlist. Nine hundred ninety nine happy haunts is the one uh, on on that. That's what it's called from Disney. I don't know. I'm just looking it up on Apple Music. I did have a Halloween playlist on the other day. Uh, Finn really dug the Monster Mash. I thought that was hilarious. Um, yeah. So the Monster Mash is kind of like, uh, kind of like the the greatest song in the world tribute by <laughs> Tenacious D, because you don't really hear yeah. the actual Monster Mash in the song Monster Mash. So they're talking about this song, or maybe it's a dance, or maybe it's both, but you don't actually hear it. So it's just it it is kind of it was the tribute before tribute was cool. Pretty much That's the Monster Mash, yes. <laughs> Yeah, we could keep talking Halloween music. I know. But, I think uh, we should. Yeah, this is actually this is actually a Halloween podcast, guys. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah but, co-op mode's been canceled. This yes. is uh, we're doing to... spooky mode. Yes. Hmm. There we go. Yes. Uh, but yeah, you know, what we've we been playing? It's it's this is obviously a lot of video games. So, uh, but we've played a couple of things, and there's going to be some spooky games in here. So this is very cool. So Mark, uh, we talked about Pumpkin Jack a couple weeks ago, and mm-hmm. this game has got a lot of momentum, and a lot of people are excited about this game. So. You were talking about you weren't sure how you were going to buy it. So how did you buy it? <laughs> or did you not buy it? I did buy it. You but buy it. I'm also – would you like to hear a tale about how much of a dumbass I am? Sorry, sorry language-wise, but uh, I'm a very dumb person. It can't be uh, true, Mark. It can't be it, true. It very much is, and you'll believe me as soon as I say this. Uh, my brother – so the past, the past, what, month at least now – uh, I've been complaining that I don't have an Xbox and it's been breaking my soul. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my brother has an Xbox that oh. he hasn't been playing because he's he's a PC gamer. So he's had an Xbox One, just a regular Xbox One. Yeah, it's the sure. white edition uh, that came out with, I think, Sunset Overdrive uh, way okay. back in the day yeah. at the Xbox One launch. Um, that's been gain- just gathering dust. And even worse, I was already logged into it. <laughs> because I shared my games and stuff with him. Sure. So um, I I didn't catch on until a couple of days ago when I went, wait a second. Colin has an Xbox One, most likely just sitting in the basement mm-hmm. that he, he probably hasn't turned on. So I texted him right away and I said, like, do you play the Xbox One? He said, very, very rarely. I said, well, could I borrow it for a couple of weeks until the Xbox Series X gets here? And he's like, Phew. Yeah, I don't care. So I, I went up to my parents' house. I unplugged it. I came back home and I just plugged it right into my TV. And I was logged in. Like I said, I was just there. So I had $20 already on my Xbox account. <laughs> <laughs> so so Pumpkin Jack cost me whatever, $3, 10 bucks or yeah. something yeah. like that. Yeah. When the Canadian conversion, I think yeah. it, was, it was close to 30 or whatever. Um, 
but yeah, that was so I'm I'm a big dum dum and I've been playing Pumpkin Jack on Xbox One and I can't wait to see it on Series X in HDR 4K, all that kind of uh, 60 frames per second goodness. But this game is delightful. I'm mm-hmm. so glad that you talked it up a few weeks ago. I'm so glad it's been getting some praise and it's it's putting me in such a great Halloween mood that um, I just want to keep on playing it. And I'm kind of sad and it, it might be that good that I might double dip. I might grab this on Switch just so I can kind of keep playing it mm-hmm. on the go while we're watching like Halloween movies and that kind of stuff. I and uh, I might uh, – I might, uh, right. Uh, right. Now I can stream, can't I? Yes. I was going to say, what are you talking Holy. about, Mark? You're a genius. See? Again, I'm, I'm a big money. dum-dum. You are saving me money. I'm a big dum-dum. That is not even an arguable point at this 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 juncture um yeah okay well there that i guess i get to test streaming see this is like i'm just so off this week i guess with it with everything that um i'm not even cluing in on these things so awesome i am very excited to test uh, the streaming capabilities of the xbox one <laughs> with pumpkin jack very soon. yeah that's that's a new uh, feature we haven't even really yeah. talked about that at all but no. basically it's remote play by via your console um, mm-hmm. to your mobile device. Now, previously, Xbox, and I think they still have it, they had streaming to PC, and that's how I did it a lot of times. So oh, basically, okay. you can stream from the Xbox to the PC, which is great, too, because if my son was using the PlayStation on the TV, I could play on the Xbox on my PC. But if, now with it's on, on the, uh, just the, X, I mean, is it the Game Pass app, or is it the Xbox app? I'm always it's getting It's the Xbox stuff. app, I believe. Okay. Yeah, so you can stream there. So there's no Game Pass yet on the phone, but there is streaming, which is great, as long as you are in the same network, I think. I don't know if you can do it outside of your home. I think you can. Okay, if you're on, like, Wi-Fi or something, it'll pick up on that network. Okay, great. So Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear how it goes for you. Yeah, I'm I'm, uh, very, very excited to test that really, really soon. So um, I'm kind of like, I want to hang up this call. (laughs) <laughs> and see how streaming works and come back and talk about it, but I won't. I won't. Well, do this that. is going to be the shortest uh, podcast ever. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> five minutes of like, hey, Funko Jack, blah blah. Um, anyway, no, this this game's fantastic. It's, it's incredibly impressive, especially when you consider that it was built by one guy. Um, like I said, I, I did only get it a couple of days ago, so I'm not very far in. How's your experience with this game been? It's funny because I played a. I found the release was previously was a demo on Steam, but for some reason I had downloaded it, but it was only like a limited time and it actually expired for my Steam account for some reason. Huh? So I had to sneakily find a rogue demo. <laughs> so I played it previously with mouse and keyboard. It sucks on mouse and keyboard. Worst way to play platformers. Yeah. But I bought it on Steam. It was $23 there um, because I'm. I will talk about my flip-flop, Mark, but I realized I'm going to stay on PC for a while, um, and it's great. It's, it supports uh, widescreen, fantastic uh, console controls. I actually played with my DualShock 4 connected, but I had Xbox prompts, <laughs> so it was like <laughs> wrong button numbers and everything, And but it, it was good. Uh, I enjoyed it. This game is like if we actually got a good Nightmare Before Christmas game. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you found a uh, uh, a phonograph player yet? Yes. Yes, I have. There's one in like the first stage and I loved it. It's so goofy and just like it's uh, it's just one of those things that makes me love this game even more. Is You just find this thing and then you have a little dance party and then you you move on and just keep going. And it's, it's just like what what is it like? where's the record button? I just need to capture this. And, uh, yeah, so I actually do have like the first, uh, the first little phonograph dance, uh, recorded on my Xbox app. Yeah, it's, it's very fun. Um, I, and I think I talked about medieval playing that, the, the remaster on mm-hmm. PlayStation that looks good, but it plays like a PlayStation one game. This right. looks good and plays fantastically. I love modern platformers when they play well. And so this game is great. I, I just put you in the mood. The music's great. That's got a sense of humor about it. Mm-hmm. I, I just I just can't say enough about it. I'm so glad it's doing well. Yeah, yeah, me too. The only thing I I would like to have seen would be maybe a little bit more voice acting or something mm-hmm. like that. Like there's a, there is a, a decent amount of text that you have to read mm-hmm. at least in the first level as it's yeah everything's getting set up. And um, I mean I understand again this was built by one guy. We've seen other games built by 
small teams that are not as impressive as this. Do, do, the animations are not as clean. Uh, the graphics are not as uh, as crisp and distinctive as this game is. Like you just you look at this game and it's just like, yeah, man, this guy's got some style. So, um, yeah, I can I can forgive those little nitpicky shortcomings of like no voice acting or this or that. But like, dude, pick this game up. It is it is uh, it's still going to be relevant after Halloween. But I think oh, yeah. right now, like it's it's a perfect time for it to launch. But like this is still going to be a fun game in mid-December. Like this is, you know, or when you get a new console or whenever, like this is this is still going to be just a solid platformer. Absolutely. Yeah. It's just one of those things where it also pro- well, it probably will feel evergreen. Come back at, to it next Halloween, too. If Absolutely. he does any more content for it or something like that. And hopefully we get a sequel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I really hope this sells well enough that uh, that this is a series. Yes, definitely. So, Mark, I played a demo. All uh, right. And I played it on the Stadia. OK, let's yeah, let's let's get into some streaming cloud games. Yes, because I actually tried to play this. There's a theme to this. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of streaming going on. Uh, so Immortals Phoenix Rising had a demo available on Stadia. Uh, it's free. You just basically went right into it. I think you just need to associate like a, 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 a Gmail account or something to be able to play it. Uh, it supports Bluetooth controllers, and basically you just need a browser, a Chrome browser to play it mm-hmm. on any device. Um, and um, I really enjoyed this game. This, this game feels like a... Uh, it, it feels like if Kid Icarus was had a baby with Assassin's Creed. Hmm. I like that description. You've you've piqued my interest. Yes. Yeah, so it, it definitely feels it has uh, pieces of uh, Assassin's Creed in regards to the traversal, the uh, basically uh, the side missions, uh, the upgrading and the weapons, but it also has some i would say some influence from breath of the wild in mm. the fact that um you you have basically can glide with these wings um it's a very simple art uh, um art style um and it does have some potion mechanics like you're building a recipe but um i would say it, it feels a lot more like assassin's creed though because of the upgrades the weapon style uh the combat uh, although combat is a lot more cartoonish, it's, it's a lot of combos and things like that. So, um, but I can see the the Breath of the Wild influence definitely. Um, it's very it's very cheeky game. The narrators are essentially Zeus and um, oh, I'm thinking of the god who was punished for bringing fire, Prometheus. So who it was? Mm. Uh, he was basically he was punished for giving the humans fire. Yeah, yeah, I think that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, so basically they're going back and forth and kind of narrating it, and they make a bet because Zeus is someone who can't stop embellishing the truth, and he's basically narrating as it goes, and Prometheus is like trying to keep him, you know, in check and says, "You can never tell the truth." Um, it got to be a little too much at times, mm. but I do appreciate the the the, the sense of humor. Uh, the main protagonist is a uh, female. I'm not sure if you can choose female or male and it's really you can i think they okay. they did announce that you could go back but i okay. think from all of the promotional material it looks like the female version is kind of the the default the canon version but uh, just like most modern assassin's creed games it seems like you can sure pick your your uh gender fluidity yeah, and, it, and i think it works um i really enjoyed it and i wanted to play more it has a lot of uh just exploration like you don't have to go and see every nooks and crannies but when you look at the vista and it just looks like it's the you know it looks like it's in greece with all the islands very tropical Mm -hmm. um and i was looking like i want to look everywhere because it's beautiful (laughs) you just find bits and pieces everywhere um which is kind of fun and uh, there's uh, there's like a skill tree there's uh, your weapons can be upgraded. You have gear and things like that so um after playing assassin's creed odyssey it just kind of made me feel like that so um i I liked it a lot um i didn't have many issues with the stadia performance um it was it did get a little clippy and 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 uh stuttery at one point but after that it was 
smooth as smooth as butter. So I really enjoyed my time. Okay. Uh, I was playing wireless, not uh, wired uh, Ethernet or anything like that. So, but I do have good internet connection. So, I mean, I don't know if it, it's it's. I think it's still available for people to play. So it's out there. Check it out if you want to. And it's essentially the first. You fight the first boss and then it ends. Okay, that's not too bad. No. as far as demos go, and. So I, I did hear about this. Uh, I think it might have been the kind of funny one of the kind of funny podcasts where they were saying it sounds like the audio for this game where you're saying the, the back and forth narration yes. was like th- there was at least a version of it or some stuff that was specifically recorded for a demo. Like the story is over, but you'll be able to play it at this point or something like that. Like mm. it, it seemed like I, I it kind of made me wonder the way they were describing it. And like I said, I tried to play this. Um, so I think a couple of weeks ago I mentioned that there was the stadium browser for yeah. iPad. Yeah. That's apparently gone it's now. Dead. Oh, no. It's dead. So I don't know. Um, it, yeah, I don't know if Apple killed it. I'm guessing Apple killed it. I, I, I can't see Google, although maybe, you know, maybe Google said, no, we want you to play it on Chrome if you're on a browser. So mm-hmm. screw off. Um, so I'm not sure. Someone killed it. Anyway, I couldn't download it. So I, I didn't end up trying this. Can but, you not uh, use it on Chrome on iPad? I don't think so. Oh, that sucks. Because I don't think it would have controller support on Chrome. It, it might. Maybe I, I should try that because I do. Yeah, give it a try. If it's, my, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. So I, I anything I've heard about this, it, it sounds absolutely delightful. But yeah, hearing the kind of funny guys talk, it sounded like it was, uh, you know, maybe audio recorded just for the demo. So that made me wonder if it's going to be the exact same throughout the whole thing. And the way you're describing it, it's, you know, where it gets a a little bit much. I'm wondering if maybe it'll be a little bit toned down. Maybe they did that for the demo to just make it stand out and seem different with an Assassin's Creed game coming out and other games that, you know, are, are kind of a little bit similar and this makes it stand out, but maybe in the full release version, it's not going to be as intense. That'll be, you know, a little bit better paced out. I do, because it was a little bit distracting. They're back and forth as I'm playing. I'm like, what should I be paying attention to what they're talking about? And they got a little deep into like Greek mythology to a point where I'm like, okay, I'm a little lost here, and I'm just trying to play the game. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so Weird. We'll, we'll see. But yeah, this comes out on December 10th. Mm-hmm. And what I like about this game is the fact that this is very family friendly. And I think mm-hmm. it's going to be a great counter in programming because uh, this is also coming to Switch, which I think is going to find a good home there because Ubisoft games do very well on Nintendo systems, just yeah. like uh, what Starlink was really good. I think this fits very well for the Switch. I don't know how well the game will perform in regards to performance, mm-hmm. but it should do well because the, the um, graphic style, like I said, is is very simple, but it's yeah. it's pretty. Looks like it can be scaled down. And, and they did show uh, we're going to be talking about the the Nintendo Direct Mini, I think, maybe later if we have some time mm-hmm. to, to get into that. But yeah, uh, this was one of the games that they showed. And again, it it showed really well. It showed really well on Switch. I think, like you said, the graphic style lends itself to being scaled down um, or up. So I, I think this game is going to be absolutely gorgeous on mm-hmm. next gen systems yeah. with HDR 4K graphics. But I think Ray if you're tracing. playing this on yeah. the Switch. Uh, I think it's it's still going to be a Breath of the Wild esque experience where the cartoony graphics still look amazing on the Switch and and I haven't decided where I want to play this. Uh, I think I need to see a little bit more uh, to decide. I've got good news for you, sir. Okay. Well, if you want to buy it twice, but it does have cross save now. Ubisoft is bringing out cross save to all their games okay. across every platform, but that does mean you have to buy it multiple times. If it's good enough, I'm okay with that. Okay, good deal. Yeah. If it's good enough, but I I will start off getting it on one platform and assess it from there. So we'll we'll see. Uh, But speaking of cloud streaming games, I did get a chance to play Control Cloud version on Switch today. It's a very, very short demo. You basically walk through a building, you talk to one guy, you get in an elevator and you're done. So it's it's incredibly quick, but uh, that's the free trial. And then you have to go pay for the rest of the experience. Uh, there are two settings. I played through both of them. One is performance and the other is graphics. Uh, I have a very good internet connection, but I specifically didn't want to plug my switch in. I do have a wired connection for my switch, Hmm. but I unplugged it. Uh, I was playing docked on my TV, but I wanted to see because switch is a portable console. I wanted to see 
I, I, I guess I could have played it undocked and really mm-hmm. got that experience, but I wanted to see what it would perform like on Wi-Fi, and I just happened to have the TV there. So I left it docked, but like I said, um, it was on Wi-Fi, and it, it performed admirably on both settings. Uh, in graphics mode, I did notice a couple of little hiccups, and I don't know if that was just my internet, uh, but even on performance mode, the game looked really, really good. Like it wasn't like performance mode dropped it down to 480p and it was just like a Vaseline like smothered mess. It, it, like it still looked really good, but it it yeah I I don't know if it was like actively scaling down the graphics so it could keep up with a better frame rate, but that would be the mode that I'd kind of lean towards uh, if I was to play this game. <sighs> the only catch is if I'm playing this game, I kind of want it to be on a more powerful system. I don't want to be streaming this game. Uh, If a switch is your only option or your preferred option, this is a great way to play this game. It really worked really well. Uh, I wrote in the show notes, the download size for this game is 80.9 megabytes. (laughs) There are save files bigger than this Mm -hmm. download. Like this is ridiculous. That's just I for the graphic. It, that's just for the graphic for the uh, the image on that you click right? on. Right, <laughs> you're basically you're you're <laughs> downloading yeah like a couple of JPEGs or something, and mm-hmm. you're you're good to go. Like that is a, a just staggeringly small file size, and it downloaded in like a, a couple of seconds for me, and it was just like here you go, play control, like which is mind blowing. Like that is cool. That is the the selling point of these cloud services is just instantly on and ready to go. Uh, so from that standpoint, I thought this was fantastic. There's no, uh, delay. There's no lag input. There was nothing with the pro controller. Um, it, it was a really, really cool experience. Not my preferred experience, but a really, really cool experience. And for other games, this might be the way I'd go. If they released, some like Assassin's Creed games or something like that. And I wanted to be able to take it on my switch. This would be the way, you know, it, like th- there are some really cool experiences that I could imagine with this, but I'm looking forward to playing control on my series X. So for me, this is a not buy, but like, man, if, uh, if the switch is your go-to check it out, it's really, really solid. As long as you have the internet connection to keep it up. So, um, yeah, I, I thought it was a really cool experience. I I really hope Switch does this, and I hope like Xbox brings like some X Cloud streaming to uh-huh. Switch. Like I just want to keep seeing the Switch, uh, you know, take advantage of these kind of technologies because they're they're obviously not going to be able to keep up with next gen graphics and all this kind of stuff. But with this, they could. This is an interesting uh, viewpoint. To your point about people are saying Game Pass needs to come to Switch. I think people have to be realistic that Game Pass is not going to come to Switch as it is now no. without xCloud. They cannot optimize 150 games to work on Switch. <laughs> not a chance. Because there's, there's games that are just are just never going to be able to be on there. So this makes a lot of sense. They have xCloud for game uh, for for Switch, whatever, and they have like a rate or whatever that you know, 10 bucks gets you Game mm-hmm. Pass through xCloud. But um, it is interesting because I have played a Control. I beat it and. Playing it on PS4 Pro, which still struggled. I would say almost every right. Xbox One. I had it on Xbox One. I actually got that from Luke Lore. I won a contest. Correct. It was almost practically unplayable on Xbox. This is the Xbox One S. PS4 Pro, Pro is better. Xbox One X, even that struggled with the game. But mm-hmm. with, with PC, this game is like one of the games that really sell, shows you what next gen can do on PC because it has ray tracing. It's beautiful and things like that. So for me knowing what this game looks like and can play like when mm-hmm. I played the, the demo, it was really disappointing to me, but uh, if you don't okay. know any better, right. I can see it. But when I looked at the graphics, I'm like, this looks like a launch 360 game. Cause I could see a lot of pixelization, like the hair <laughs> around the hair and stuff like that. Yeah. Around the hair was so, it, so it was, it was kind of weird. Cause there was like some weird pixelization around the hair, but then when you talk to the janitor guy, yes. like I thought he looked really good. And there were even parts where, I was kind of running towards something and you could see little like particle effects in Mm -hmm. like, you know, like reflecting in the light in a little area or like really good uh, reflections in windows or mirrors as you were walking past. So there were, there were some things that really impressed me and there's some other things that were like, 
that's a little janky. And I didn't know if it was the speed or how they're running it, but like theoretically they could be running this on extreme settings on PC somewhere and then streaming it. So I don't know. I don't know if there's some optimizations they could do or if there's some kind of limit of what, I mean, obviously the switch isn't going to be putting out 4k. So maybe are they scaling it down to 720 or 1080 Mm -hmm. and they're, they're running it at like mid PC specs maybe because they know the switch just can't deliver those, uh, those visuals. I'm not sure. I'd love to see why they're making the tech decisions that they're making with this. Cause I think it could look better and not tax the switch any more than it is. Absolutely. So it, it might be a, uh, a, a Wi-Fi consideration that mm-hmm. they're like, you know, we could stream it really solidly at this graphic fidelity and looking like this. If we bump up the settings you know, you're going to need a, an internet speed that's this high and, and you know, whatever, 70% of the population can't stream it that fast. You know, I, I'm sure there's considerations of why it looks the way it does. But for a streaming game, I know this game can look prettier. But for streaming, oh, I, thought it, I thought it was good. Yeah, like a service like Stadia, they can do 4K with this. Right. Uh, I don't know who's doing – I don't know what servers these are on, quite honestly, so we don't know what they're capable of, what type of hardware yeah. they're running off of. Um, I know uh, xCloud will be on uh, Series X hardware in 2021. Mm-hmm. Currently, xCloud can only stream at 720p. So even if you put an xCloud game on a big screen TV at 720p, it's still not going to look that hot versus a little small screen. So, And I don't know what resolution this is actually running at. I couldn't tell. There's no way to really see yeah. it, unfortunately. So, yeah, a lot of things could – but I, I think this is a great first move. Um, and we know sometimes the Switch has struggled with their online services, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it at all. <laughs> exactly. So, but, but I think this is right. And we heard uh, 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 Hitman is coming the Hitman same way. Hitman 3. Yeah. yeah. In Japan, they already had the Resident Evil, I think, 7. Was that one that right. they did? Yeah. So yeah. I think I'm glad that they're showing Switch can be more than this today. And maybe this is the entry into a next gen for Switch without having to worry about keeping up with the Joneses on the hardware front. Yeah, absolutely. And this also could be laying groundwork for a Switch Pro that mm-hmm. might have faster Wi Fi, might even have like an LTE or 5G chip or something inside it. Like, if you're thinking Switch Pro for next year or the year after, or whatever, um, to me, a a Switch Pro, I'm I'm thinking the highest specs I can. So like, yeah, maybe this thing does, like I said, uh, some sort of cell connection. Maybe not 5G, but at least LTE mm-hmm. or something that, uh, you know, and, and faster like Wi-Fi 6 or something. That that yeah, these streaming games are going to look better automatically on something that can stream things faster and, and run better internet. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think this is a really cool test bed for this kind of capability. I'd love to see, like you said, uh, someone who has the technology, we don't know who's really running this or what kind of servers they have. Uh, you get again, X cloud, uh, stadia, someone just having an app on switch yeah that I think they could show it off because they're, they're the guys with the the streaming power and the, the money behind the infrastructure. So it'll be interesting to see where this technology goes in the future. But uh, for a first ditch effort uh, stateside anyway, I thought this was really cool. Yeah. And it's, it's available now. Uh, I don't know how much the game costs. It's, it's a, you're, you're buying like a pass, but it's essentially to play the whole game and yeah. it includes the DLC. So I don't know if it's 40 bucks or whatever. That's how much the, uh, c- version that's coming out to next gen is going to cost anyway, so maybe it should be the same. Um, yeah. Now, this does put me at a point, Mark, where I'm saying, why can't that big hunk of plastic that was $80 include an Ethernet port? <laughs> Come on! Yeah. Yeah, you, you, definitely. Absolutely. But, you know, it, yeah. yeah. Uh, very quickly, I, I told you this, I finally... I, it, this is like one of those – sometimes when you're leaving a system behind, you have like a checklist of things you got to do. Well, one thing I had to do was play PT. It's been sitting on my console, PS4 console, forever. It's not going to be downloadable on PS5. Now, what I might be able to do is just transfer it from my hard mm. drive and just play it off of that. I don't know. I'm going to still do that, but right. I don't know if I need to now because I played it. <laughs> and man, oh, man, uh, what was it? A playable test? Is that what it was? What was it? What did it stand uh, for? Yeah, that's P- PT, playable test, I believe. That's, yes. that's what it was. 
so this was basically a demo for uh was supposed to be the silent hills game that Mm -hmm. went through all the chaos with kojima never got made and it's kind of a weird and you've played it before and i never i didn't actually finish it because i couldn't figure out how to trigger the next thing i was kind of at a standstill so i'm like what am i supposed to do but it's basically a hallway walking simulator that's very freaky and (laughs) creepy um and that's about it that's all i can say it's basically i went through that hallway like 18 times and i thought i was gonna get the point point mark where i was like oh going through here again and something was just gonna come out and like scare the crap out of me but i must not have triggered the right thing because it did (laughs) kept on repeating it i'm like what am i not doing yeah yeah, no, there. I, I think I had kind of a similar experience. Like I, so many people were talking up PT, and I, I played this years ago, so my memory is a, a little fuzzier than yours for sure. But yeah, it never really had that like super scary factor. Like my brother-in-law and I played it at his place. I, I, I don't think I even fired. Like I downloaded it on mine, but I don't think I ever fired it up. Um, so we went down to his basement. All the lights were off, everything, and like. It was like, hey, he was like, this is going to scare the crap out of you. And I was like, okay, cool. Let's let's do this. I'm ready. And uh, there was like no jumps. I was like, yeah, that's that's mildly creepy. No, oh, that's that's a little unsettling. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, cool, cool. Like, but like there was never anything that was like, you know, zombie dog jumping through a window or something like I talked about last episode. Um, yeah, I don't know. It just it was just kind of like, okay, cool. It is what it is. Now, if Kojima jumped out at you, that that would be really scary. That, <laughs> sure. So, yeah, I don't know if there is a – yeah, maybe we, we both didn't trigger what we were supposed to or something. Or maybe or Jeff Keighley both. maybe. They're good buddies, we're, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would be very unsettling, yeah. Jeff Jeff Keighley's face on a little girl's body or something saying, like, come play with us. Uh, be, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, well. But, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe we're just – we're ready to be Ghostbusters. I think that's the answer. Like, I think and too. And speaking of which, uh, Epic Game Store actually had Ghostbusters, uh, the the new that you know that game that came out. Mm-hmm. Like, Ghostbusters, the well, game. Yeah, it's free on Epic Game Store, so check it out. I don't know how long it's going to so, be there, but that's a great game. Uh, yeah, check that out. Um, so Mark, I, I'm curious about this game uh, that you're going to talk about next because my son loved Pokemon Sword and Shield, mm-hmm. but he was kind of disappointed in the reviews of the first expansion. But I've heard good things about the second one. Yeah, so uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield, the Crown Tundra expansion, is out. That is the second part of the DLC. I I enjoyed the first DLC. It was it was neat, but uh, yeah, the second one so far is is definitely better and more interesting to me. They've added a ton of Pokemon, including my favorite uh, Nidoran. Nido King has always been on any team that I can get a Nido King on is always on my team since the very first red and blue i have had a nitto king named elvis on my team what N- nitto king he's a giant <laughs> like uh scaly poison rat king monster it's he's great oh um, yeah yeah he's my favorite little, one too. little spiky nitteran there's a little poison <laughs> bunny rabbit rat thing uh anyway favorite one um and i always name him elvis because he's the king uh so <laughs> So I've been missing Nidoran uh, this whole, uh, you know, with, with Pokemon Sword and Shield. And uh, and he's back. So as soon as I saw this, I was like, whoa, jumping in. Elvis is back on my team. Let's do this. Uh, but they've been adding so many uh, old Pokemon, new Pokemon, uh, revisions of some old legendaries. A ton of old legendaries are either in the game or you can transfer them from your old game. So if you have Pokemon Home, this is great. I transferred a ton of legendaries from like Sun and Moon and like other games way back. It's awesome. Like super enjoying it. Um, there's like increased shiny rates so you have a better chance of of catching like a a pokemon that's a color that it's not supposed to be which is a shiny um and then there's this like cool little story that you can go through so i'm I'm still working my way through the story but uh yeah i'm i'm really enjoying it so far and it's it's uh it's a cool little escape so you know the last dlc was kind of a tropical island bit and a lot of water and stuff and this one uh as the name suggests is in the tundra so it's a lot of like frozen stuff uh to to start off with so um yeah really cool if you're if you're a pokemon fan this is this is a good dlc to jump into because uh like i said a lot of old favorites are back 
Very nice. I'll tell my son mm-hmm. about it, and his birthday is next month, so maybe that's what Perfect. he'll get to go along mm-hmm. with his We Guitar Hero guitar. Don't ask, <laughs> don't ask questions. Long story. <laughs> um, well, lastly, I played another demo. This will lead into our story, uh, uh, the first new story, and that is uh, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. I don't know if I got that name right, but I hope I did. Something like that. Yeah, so basically this is taking the Muso format, Hyrule Warriors, and basically melding it with uh, Breath of the Wild's art style storyline, but as basically a prequel and telling you what happened that caused the events uh, that basically kicked off Breath of the Wild. Um, mm-hmm. And I was not a huge fan of The Last Hyrule Warriors. I just felt it was too much rinse and repeat. Um, it was kind of neat. It was definitely fan service. Everything yeah, under the sun, whatever. every player's, and it's almost too much. Uh, but it definitely does not have that level of, you know, uh, difficulty that you would see like in Breath of the Wild with kind of individual people. It's basically like mass uh, amount of enemies, and you can just wreak havoc and just have fun. Um, this game actually is very beautiful. Um, it's definitely embraced the art style, and it kicks off kind of a how you got there, which is fun. And there's kind of a, and you'll see in the trailer, I don't know if you've seen the trailer for it, but how the way it kicks off, I like it. It's very cool. But basically it's kicking off basically the war against the calamity. And Mm -hmm. basically you're in a war format. So this kind of makes sense that you would be fighting tons of people. Um, And basically in the demo, you are playing as Link and uh, going through it, you're kind of like doing your first mission, which is kind of like getting these checkpoints taken care of. But along the way, you do unlock characters that become playable as you encounter them, which is cool. Um, and then you could switch between them if you wanted to. So it's it's very similar in that format. You're getting a lot of commands and what you can do with your people and things like that. Uh, but I like the combat. It's just a lot of fun. I think it really embraced those elements of Breath of the Wild in a really cool way. So this one may bring me back. Cool. So, yeah, All right. I think it's worth yeah. checking out. I, I downloaded this demo. Uh, we, we were talking before we started recording, and I, I mentioned that uh, I thought I was going to have enough time to play both this and Control after work today. Uh, I got the Control demo down, and then life got in the way, so I didn't play this. So it's, it's good to hear that that you had a pretty good experience. I'm, I'm very interested in this game. Uh, like you, I liked Hyrule Warriors wasn't like super in love with it it definitely didn't kind of live up to other zelda standards but it was a fun kind of distraction it's it's you know you eat rice when you want to eat ten thousand of something Mm -hmm. Uh, you play hyrule warriors when you want to kill ten thousand of something that is basically how these games are and i think that like lends itself really well to this is a war this is the war a hundred years before breath of the wild. So it, it is going to be a bit busier. You are going to be going through as the champions killing or mowing your way through a hundred moblins at a time. And I, I think this is, uh, this is definitely something that I'm looking forward to and, and looking forward to, to playing with my wife who enjoyed the first Hyrule warriors, uh, when we were playing co-op as well. So, uh, this will be a good co-op mode game for sure. Yes, I will say um, playing the game and maybe they're going to do some more tweaking to this, but you definitely can feel the switch really struggling at times oh, wow. when there's too many enemies on screen. A lot of things disappear and then come back. Hmm. So um, I'm really starting to feel like we are on the edge of needing fresher hardware because I think the switch is so capable in some ways because of what it wants to do, but it's mm-hmm. still dealing with old an, an old chipset that is going on, you know, the, 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 I think the X one or whatever it was called, uh, basically the NVIDIA shield, shield hardware previously is based off the same one. It's really dated now. So I, I'm hoping yeah. they will refresh it because uh, I think it's, it, the format works so good. I think they just need a little bit of a punch up in Ram screen resolution and horsepower they don't have to do too much, but I think if they can get to maybe Xbox One, PS4 levels, just base, not not necessarily pro or anything like that, I think yeah. it'll be in a good position. Absolutely, I think we're on the precipice of a Switch Pro right now. Absolutely, we just have to wait it out. Yep, yep, definitely. Uh, so we get into the news, Mark, and and just as we spoke, if you want to walk us through kind of the Nintendo Mini Direct publisher partners part eighty five. <laughs> Yeah, so this was they they 
went into this saying this is the last partner showcase of 2020, so we will not be getting one in November or December. Uh, they showed off a few games. We already talked about uh, Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity. Uh, we talked about Control Ultimate Edition and Hitman 3. They are all... Uh, they were all featured in this uh, this direct, but we don't need to really touch on those. A uh, few other games that they mentioned, Bravely Default 2, which is what they started this off with. I think it was the first five minutes, uh, yeah. Bravely Default 2. Um, looks good if you're a Bravely Default fan. Um, I love the art. Fairly it's very interesting. Yeah, it, yeah. 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 I did. I have to say, even though I did not play the first Bravely Default and, and RPGs aren't usually my jam. I did like the art style on this. It did actually, yeah. I, I actually watched it even though I could have skipped through it. Cause this was not like a live stream. This was just like one of those Nintendo things of like, Hey, here's a YouTube link. Enjoy. Yeah. So a uh, random drop, but uh, yeah, Bravely Default 2 that's coming out to in uh, 2021. I believe that's <laughs> the first delay that we'll talk about today. Mm-hmm. Um, what else do they show off? Uh, no more heroes three. And they, did a, again, surprise drop of No More Heroes 1 and 2 on Switch. Um, absolutely wacky series, if you haven't played them oh, yeah. before. Just we, uh, over yeah, the, the top crazy. We, uh, sweetheart of the Wii. And they kind of stayed yeah. there. They, they never came to Wii U, so, yeah. Nope. Yeah, super, super wacky. So try those. Um, what else? They, they, they talked about a couple of other things. Oh, they I, did. I, I've got another um, link. Yeah, I've got another link. They did show. It's like a farming it, a sim. Yep game they uh, we oh yes we, they, they yeah, talk about, story of uh, seasons pioneers of olive town mark uh, highly anticipated lol i've got a god oh my god i'm getting this ad is so loud in the stupid link what the hell like <laughs> I, where the hell is it talking where's the mute where's the damn mute oh my god all good okay. all good sorry uh, they, um, there's another one that was uh was a post-apocalyptic apocalyptic yes. um I can't remember oh, the name of that oh, one. Oh yeah, I'm I'm going to get out of that damn link. It was so loud. Why is it so uh, no bad? Uh, surviving the aftermath. I think yeah, that was like that state one. Of decay, it almost looked like state of decay. Mm-hmm. To me. Yeah, so that was a, uh, you know, fairly interesting looking um if yeah, if if that so- sounds like something you're into, the you know, state of decay kind of thing. Um looked like you kind of build your town and and whatever and and yeah, kind of try to survive in the post-apocalyptic apocalyptic world. Mercy, why can't I get that out? Um, and then, oh, what was the other with the the UFO part-time, part-time UFO? Part-time UFO, yeah. And that, that is great. again out now. Yeah. Uh, that's by Hal Labs. Uh, so Kirby development team, and it looks super cute. It's out now. I don't think it's uh, wildly expensive either. So, um, so that's that. Yeah, I think I don't think we missed anything there. I think that's it. Uh, there was uh, Earthlands, which is a card-based um, battler, and it oh, has a really okay, cool art right. style. Almost looks yes. like a like a more cartoonish Borderlands. Mm-hmm. Yes, I did miss that one. My yeah. apologies to that game, which might be fantastic, and I uh, I skipped right over it. Um, anyway, I thought this was a pretty good direct. There was something there for a ton of different kinds of players. Uh, you know, obviously, I I. <laughs> The ones I highlighted off the top of my head are the ones I'm a little bit more interested in. But, uh, yeah, definitely some stuff here that uh, I think round out the end of 2020 partner showcase pretty good. Do you think we'll be getting a proper Nintendo Direct that's not a partner showcase? Or do you think this is it? This is Nintendo is done talking for 2020. They're out. Oh, that's a good question. Because Do we know of any games um, beyond what Pokemon Snap? Are there any other games like actually planned uh, first party? Oh, oh, we have uh, 3D World is, is the only other game. Right. Yeah. And they, you know, they've been putting out bits and pieces of that. I've seen a couple of things on Twitter and whatever. Um, Pikmin, I think, drops tomorrow. I yeah. Say. Question mark. Yeah. Uh, as we're recording this. Um, but yeah, that's it's kind of slim picking. So I'm, I'm really expecting something in November to be like, this is a full Nintendo Direct. Here's what to expect for the first half of 2021, maybe. Yeah, when's their last game uh, of uh, 2020 uh, coming out? Is it um, Calamity of of Age yeah. of Calamity? Yeah. So yeah, so I could see something in December. 
Or if yeah. they have the uh, the game awards are still going to happen in December, maybe they do something there. Oh, maybe, maybe. Yeah. I I'm really curious how uh, if Nintendo is launching a Switch Pro next year, will they launch it in that same March Cadence. time frame, and will they announce it early with the potential to absolutely kill Switch holiday sales? Mm. That's the big thing right now. They weren't worried back a few years ago about killing the Wii nope. U holiday sales. Who cares? Uh, so uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Announce the Switch, show off Breath of the Wild, do this, do that, whatever. Because um, at that point they were just like, we got nothing to lose. Here's an NES Mini and and you know a teaser trailer or whatever that you know. Th- so this year it's yeah, the Switch has been selling like crazy, best selling console for 22 months running, maybe yeah. 23. Are they going to mess that up by right now saying like, hey, in March, you're going to get something better. So maybe don't buy it now. Or are they just going to keep letting this go? And in January or February, when it's too late to return your Christmas switch, are they going to be like, oh, P.S. Next month, we're dropping something new. Or are they just going to kind of wait till next fall? Very good curious qu- to see how the roll out. Good is. question. How do they typically announce their revisions? Like, so from like the 3DS to the 3DS XL or the new, mm. whatever, do they normally just drop that like in a, a tweet? Do they just do a video? Uh, I'm trying to remember. I think so, yeah. Yeah, because I'm thinking they could do a January drop, give you like two months and have a March system drop in March, maybe. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they, want, I don't know. It depends on what they want to do financially, what they need to deliver. So if they want to hit that, like, because March is the end of their fiscal, so they may launch it in the beginning of March, just like Switch did, and try mm-hmm. to duplicate it again, but do like that January drop they, they did when they did the Switch, maybe. You know, it was the, what, the Japanese director or whatever thing that was really weird? Yeah. 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 So maybe they do that. Yeah. yeah I don't think I'm they're going to sabotage. I don't think they're going to sabotage holiday sales, though. I don't think so. I think if we hear anything, it's going to be just the, like I said, this, these are the games that to expect in the, the first half of 2021. And we, we could see that in, in November again, just to, to give that slight boost of like, you know, I'm kind of thinking about a switch this holiday season, but the other consoles just launched, you know, why would I pick up a switch? What's coming in 2021? Uh, and especially now, you know, things keep getting pushed back for the other consoles if Nintendo has some cool tricks up their sleeves, uh, this could be the time to announce it and say, like, hey, we know this, this, and this are getting pushed back. We got you covered. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it, it might be a good time to do that. But uh, I want to talk about some delays. Um, can we do that later? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mark, delays. Why do we even have release dates? <sighs> Just so we can get our hopes up. Uh, and then it's almost like the Batman quote. Why, why do we have delays? We can learn to pick ourselves back up again. Uh, Master <laughs> Bruce. Uh, I don't, man at this. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is, it is a rough season if you are trying to book some time off. And I know there are some people around that book time off for games or releases or, you know, windows of, of time where they thought there was going to be a couple of releases and, and, for that kind of thing, if your job's not flexible, that sucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially for this, the first game that we're going to lead with, Cyberpunk, delayed 21 days. They need those 21 days, and uh, they're they're adamant that the 21 days is going to make a big difference. I tend to believe them. CD Projekt Red has one hell of a track record. If I'm going to believe any studio, when they say we need an extra 20, 21 days, whatever, it's going to be this one. They, they to me are at that Nintendo, Nintendo level of knowing when their game needs more polish. Uh, what we're hearing about this is the game's ready for PS5 and Xbox Series X. It is not ready or not running at an optimal level, optimal level for current gen hardware, and they want it to be running really well no matter if you're getting a new console this season or not. So that is apparently where this delay is coming from. Um, They're very apologetic. Please, if you're listening to this and you're very upset, we understand, but do not send death threats to developers. They are humans. They are people. Todd, how are you feeling about this one? I'm, I'm a little mixed of uh, mixed emotions on this one. Obviously I'm excited for this game. 
mm-hmm. and I love the studio. Witcher 3 is one of my favorite games of all time. Um, and it is interesting because this is another delay. This game has been delayed like four times now. Mm-hmm. So I'm a little frustrated at the fact that they cannot get the actual game developers and their business team on the same page. Yeah. Because I, I really feel it's the business side is doing a lot of things without really considering oops and things like that that would happen. The game has gone gold, though. This is interesting, Mark. That's the really weird part. Yes. So if you bought, if you buy like the disc version, you're going to get a version that you essentially could play without this extra polish. Mm hmm. So yeah, I wonder what that would day be zero like. Patch. One, I'm sure we'll get some tests. Yes. I know IGN talked about doing that potentially. One system would just be the desk, disk based version. Um, but the frustrating part I get about this, and, and I'm kind of mean about this, I don't want to leave anybody behind, but. I'm getting a little bit feeling like trying to keep games that are very ambitious on old hardware to me, I think just adds more work to developers, Mm -hmm. especially as they're trying to push the envelope on PC graphic cards that are now coming out that are even will destroy our new, you know, next gen, the 3090 or whatever with, with 24 gigs of RAM and weighs upon, you know, it's the size of the Xbox refrigerator. I mean, <laughs> it, it just, I mean, do we feel like, I mean, do they have to be obligated to systems that are now seven years old? That's, and that's the big issue. But when you're this far gone, mm-hmm. canceling for what, what are the, ins- let's, let's say a hundred and 170. Or 160 million. Yeah, and that's you know play is is that PlayStation 5, 4 and Xbox, Xbox One combined? Yes, that's that's everyone combined. Yeah, 113 plus 55 million maybe. So okay. you're probably at 170 million. 170. So 170 million potential people that you're pissing off yeah. on a holiday season where these new consoles are already hard to get. Uh, I understand. Yeah, I I Good as point. much as you know the t- the two of us we're we're in a position right now we have some pre-orders you have more than most I'm ready to uh, throw my PS4 can... Pro down the, the hill and kick it to the curb I already threw my, I sold my Xbox One X Mark. yeah you uh, already got rid so, of yours so you're, you're uh, back mine, to the, mine's you're gone back, yeah I'm... you're back to that junk heap of the Xbox One X <laughs> the Xbox One yeah, yeah. and the uh, the PS4 base both base models uh, man you want so my living what? room to sound like I'm sitting so, in a jet engine. So if your Series X doesn't show up, you'll just play it on the uh, X, the original Xbox One and just get to experience that. That'll be great. That'll be fantastic. <laughs> I'll just melt my brother's uh, Xbox exactly. One. He's, yeah. Um, so I, you know, I get not wanting to to piss off 170 million people, um, minus the few people that are going to get these new consoles. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I'm definitely also. I understand where you're coming from of like, you know, leave the past behind, let it burn, uh, let it die. Whatever Kylo Ren said, you know, uh, yeah. (laughs) Uh, so that like, yeah, to me, it's, it's so hard. And, and again, you probably have that business team. You, You probably have people on this development team on the tech side, on the programming side saying, Let's let's even just delay the PS4 and Xbox yeah. One versions and release the new versions as is. Let's just keep that release date and release the PS4 and Xbox One versions 21 days later. Absolutely. And you have some business person saying like, no, 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 we need like a launch all across the whole, you know, whatever. And, uh, you know, so I'm sure that's some internal stuff going on, too, that they're they're arguing back and forth where. I, I, you have to believe that once the game went gold, they said someone was saying, no, 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 we are shipping the Series X and PS5 versions of this the day we said. And somebody else won and said, no, 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 we're shipping all of these versions on the same day. We have to delay. Like, it's, it's got to be tough. It's got to be so tough on that team. Yeah, that just made me think about this, actually. So, Actually, they couldn't just ship the PS4 version because the PS, the, the version we're going to play on Xbox Series X and PS5 are the old versions. We're not getting the Series X oh, and PS5 right. patch we're not getting the optimized until, until who knows? So, whenever. So, right. Mark, we're all screwed. <laughs> so yeah, it had just been PC. 
It was just yeah. PC. Yeah. I guess, yeah. Right. Yeah. You're right on that. Oh man. Yeah. yeah there's no exact. Yeah. There's no different skew for the next. It's just, no. they're going to run better on those. Yeah. 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 Man. What a pain in the arse for that. PC, uh, PC gamers. No wonder they hate us, Mark. No wonder they hate us. <laughs> Our horrible consoles holding them back. Oh, exactly. Well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I they, just, I just don't want them to be crunched. I mean, yeah, that's that's, that's what I was worried about because they said they're going to have to crunch and do six extra weeks to hit their November date. Mm-hmm. I hope with this 21 day extension, it means standard work weeks, yeah. just do your standard, no crunch anymore, um, because that just would be like, why even bother anymore? Why even bother talking about you know we're we're not going to have crunch anymore if we're going to continually push it again? Because I think some people would say, I was down to crunch for you know that November date. I'm not ready to mm-hmm. crunch an extra three weeks, you know, so. Yeah, uh, but that's not the only delay. We've heard about a few others. So we have uh, what Rainbow Six, uh, Plague Night, or whatever the hell it's called. Quarantine. It's, it's a corn something. It's a, it's inappropriately named for for 2020. Uh, what else uh, do do we have delayed? Uh, Far Cry uh, Six. Far Cry Six is another one. We we just learned about uh, the Avengers next okay. gen versions and their dlc all going to be delayed um oh man what else there there's been some other crazy delay. anyway the whole it seems like the whole industry is, is being delayed um so it's it's i mean you you know when when everything else is yes cyberpunk is is taking it it seems like from from online from twitter and everything else like cyberpunk's taking kind of the brunt of this and maybe it's because they they went gold on Twitter, they were very vocal about like, we'll never delay again. Uh, have you seen the the meme with um, uh, th- does like the Simpsons thing? Like no more delay, like no more delays now or something like that. And it's like, no comma more delays, delays. coming or something like that, right? <laughs> yeah. It's uh, like how to cook for humans. No, how to cook <laughs> humans. Yeah. 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 Uh, so it's, yeah, may, I'm guessing that's, that's, part of why cyberpunk's getting picked on so much but like i mean delays are happening they're learning how to work from home and they're learning how to keep secrets and and keep the game under wraps uh, while they're all working remotely it's it's not a fun time for any industry especially the video game industry so be patient people we have tons of stuff to play go in your backlog and pick on some games uh, or even demos like todd demonstrated earlier with pt uh, there's there's tons of stuff. I'm sure you missed something this generation. Yeah, go back six years, you'll find something that was probably worth playing. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, now, the the one interesting part that, that I, I've been mulling over is Game of the Year. This directly packs, impacts Cyberpunk. Most likely, this is going to push Cyberpunk. Jeff Keighley already mentioned yeah. it. Yeah, yeah it's gonna he, he, uh, he came right out and said, uh, this delay means that cyberpunk will be the first game eligible for game of the year next year crazy meaning it completely misses this year's game awards um no one can review this game in like two days no to put it in the running for their awards so yeah yeah, this goes to next year and i worry about that because it's bit games uh that release too early that get forgotten but i don't think that's going to be the case with this game i think this is one of those once in a genre or once in a once in a generation game and the fact that it's really pushing the envelope this early it's going to be remembered i hope so yeah like you said it, it, other games have been bitten in the past uh i'm wondering if this means maybe next year around this time we see maybe dlc just to kind of boost that or something like some kind of a an expansion or something or the announcement of it uh game of the year edition or something you know something that they're the the or special edition or something oh they're that online their online component was supposed to come out later anyway so that would be a great way just like resident yeah. uh, uh red dead redemption had its online mode and gta had yeah. its online mode so yeah yeah i i would expect uh, maybe to see something like that even if it's not this late uh something when you know when they need it to to boost our our uh you know, uh, that boosted back into our consciousness of like, oh, yeah, this game did come out technically this year for the game more considerations. Let's consider it. And now there's this online component or DLC or something like that. So uh, be very interesting to follow this game over the next year. 
It will be, and it'll basically be in, the expansion will be uh, Johnny Silver Hand Gun Man, aka <laughs> Neo, aka uh, John Wick. Like there'll be some like yes. weird crossover. So yeah, he is I'm the on chosen board. one. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and you know what's worse than sometimes a game being delayed? Uh, it's losing yeah. your leaders who make the game. Um, Mercy. Yeah, Halo Infinite has once again lost one of its uh, creative leads. Mm-hmm. Um, previously, uh, they had lost, um, in 2019, Tim Longo. He was the creative director. He left. Mm-hmm. Producer Mary Olson left shortly after that. Um, so then to uh, supplement the game after it was delayed, they then brought on Halo alum Joseph Staten, Staten, who I believe he was the story lead in the previous halo games so he was kind of the guy yeah so he was kind of the only guy that was brought in from the previous games uh and we weren't exactly sure what his he was basically going to be like the game fixer the guy who brought (laughs) it all together um and then now we're talking maybe what two months later now we have the 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 head of uh 343 uh is uh, has left he's decided to step down and that Mm -hmm. is chris lee um they don't say anything about typically when somebody does that it's like i'm stepping away now because the game's in good hand it's at the finishing line i'm ready you know it, it's 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 ready to to go a leader rarely steps away when something is still kind of considered on kind of rocky ground without any clear understanding of a release date so um mark what is what is your thoughts about 343 now considering everything that's happened they've not they've had halo almost as much as as long as bungie has and mm-hmm. i don't think they've really had an i a game that said this is 343 it's put us on the map and it's made halo uh incrementally different or a triple a at this point yeah if i were phil spencer i would be at that studio or on like daily zoom calls being like, listen, we're, we're watching you. Uh, you guys, you guys gotta do something there. You gotta fix up. Um, there's just, there's too many departures. There's too much turmoil. There's too much crap. And like you said, there's, there's not enough to show for it. Uh, you look at what the coalition has done with the gears franchise and it's like, dude, (laughs) <laughs> like what are you guys doing? Are they, and I don't know if they're they're too ambitious with this project or they're not focused or they can't find their footing because people keep leaving and then why do these people keep leaving? There's there's got to be something that I I can't wait for 10 15 years down the road when we get the documentary of WTF happened here, but like dude there is something desperately wrong with 343, and I hope they figure it out. I hope they get someone in there who can just take the reins, and maybe that's it. Maybe they need someone a little bit like more, I don't know, strict or or headstrong or something in the lead. Like, who's the lead of of 343? I know Chris Chris Lee was oh, the it was, studio head of FPS oh. development. Um, Good question. Um, I mean, even like um, if you think of like the coalition, they had Rod Ferguson Mm -hmm. and but he he left, but he made sure that team had basically created really two excellent sequels. And they, you know, people re-energized about Gears and, you know, it's it's raised the bar on Gears. So and he like I said, he left for Mm -hmm. I think he went to bot. No, he he went to uh, Blizzard, I believe, to work at Diablo. Yeah. And that's the way you do it. You leave yeah. things better than when you came and That's you say, it. I've I've got the right people in the right place and they know mm-hmm. their vision and they are fully capable. We didn't get this. Um, so I'm I'm nervous. And I and like we talked about leaving systems behind. Mm-hmm. This team has a couple of things they have to manage against. A brand new engine, a brand new type of Halo that's kind of open world. Uh they have to now launch. They've never launched on multiple platforms before. Yep. See, you know, basically X for all the way from the, the base Xbox One which is you know, seven years old, Xbox One S, has, which has a little bit different specs, uh, One X, Series X, S, X, and PC. That's a lot of variables. Yeah. So 
ah, is it too much to ask? And is it is it yeah. is it at that point eight years later to say we're going to still give you Halo, or is it time to say we're going to put X Cloud on your old Xbox One and you can stream it? That's that's kind of I mean the the install base you know we talked about it for Cyberpunk of 170 million, but uh, you know comparatively the install base for Xbox One. I think a lot of us are going to be moving over to Series mm-hmm. X. I think that's that's a great option to to have it on X Cloud on uh, the Xbox One. I think for this game, I'm going to counter everything I said for Cyberpunk and say, yeah, let's leave it behind. Let's let's move on. If that's what we need, if that's one of the small puzzle pieces that will help right this ship. But I, I, I think there's a more systemic issue mm-hmm. here. I don't know if it's leadership or something else or whatever it is, but uh, like I said, if I was Phil Spencer, I'd be just cracking that, like, you know, cracking down on that team and, and just, uh, yeah, just, just, I don't know, figuring out what's going on. But uh, this is, this is like if, if the, the Mario team started falling apart and losing people left and right, like this is your big, thing right like just get it under control <laughs> we um, don't want it we don't want halo to turn into Star Fox, guys right right and uh, yeah i don't know so uh i i hope they can figure themselves out and i hope uh, i hope this turns out to be a good story in the end of it and halo infinite is fantastic but uh you know the road there has definitely been rocky and and doesn't se- <laughs> doesn't seem like it's going to be smooth sailing anytime soon so uh i don't know gears is great <laughs> and you know it's got to be a weird feeling at xbox right now because they just well they're about to acquire some studios who make pretty damn good shooters oh yeah and you know what i would hope they would want to make sure they make a damn good game because guess what phil spencer probably would be hmm i like doom i like <laughs> uh, wolfenstein i like quake yeah john carmack what are you up to oh yeah mm-hmm. come on back all hands on deck, 343, three. please get it together. We want to play your game. But at this point, I'm guessing uh, holiday 2021. Yeah. Yeah, I can pick, yeah, Doom, Wolfenstein, either of those teams on a Halo game. Master's Chief just giving her through space zombies. I don't care, like, whatever, man. Like, just, I don't know, if maybe they need to scale down the ambition. And, and yeah, it's something, something's got to give. But uh, yeah. we'll see. We'll see. You know, we're, we're not going to get to play Halo anytime soon, but we do have some some new launches. So let's let's get into the bonus round. Yeah, Mark. So we're going to basically break this down. This was requested once again by Sean and Henry Nias. They want us to kind of break down kind of what we need to know from the hardware, the accessories and the games and how we get ready. He was so excited because he's going to get my Xbox Series X pre-order. So good on him. He's getting that. Excellent. And then he did the. The, the Momo Jomo of buying the Xbox Live two years, then converting it to Game Pass. So he's set now for two years. He's so excited, uh, nice. asking about what he needs. So we're going to go into that now. So basically, Mark, we're going to kick it off with Xbox Series mm-hmm. S and X. So talk about what you need if you're going to jump into Xbox for the first time. Uh, you'd need, I would say, the first thing would be an Xbox. Wise so if decision. you want to <laughs> <laughs> uh J K L O L. Uh so the first things you'd need, I mean that that the funny thing is with Xbox that could potentially be it. Like I obviously you want a TV that can take advantage of the Series X, so something with 4K HDR. Uh if you're getting a brand new TV, hopefully you'd be considering one that can do 120 frames per second. If not, you know, you, you're probably going to be OK with 4K and HDR. Um, but, you know, all uh, Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 can both take advantage of some really cool TV technology that's just coming out in TVs. So, you know, if you have a TV, maybe wait a couple of years for the yes. price of the Dolby stuff and the, you know, the, the 120 frames per second to come down. But uh, aside from the TV, that's one thing that I love about Xbox this generation is you could pick up an Xbox with, like you said, the two years of Game Pass or Game Pass monthly subscription or however you want to do it, you could essentially pick up that box with Game Pass and plug it in day one and have hundreds of games to play, not pay an extra cent for any other games, maybe pick up another controller 
or an Xbox One controller because they're fully backwards compatible. Mm -hmm. And really all you're missing is that share button and a couple of the textured grips, unless you get a special edition like the Gears of War uh, special edition Xbox controller, which I have that has the grips and the the, um, grippy triggers and all that kind of stuff. Um, And you're kind of good to go, really. Mm -hmm. Like there, there are extra accessories that you can get, headsets and this and that and whatever, but like... You know, for the most part, if a headset plugs in, it's good to go. Like the Steel Series Arctis One that I'm wearing right now, um, that's a Switch first headset with USB C audio, but also just plugs directly into my Xbox controller. It works. Um, so realistically, like Game Pass makes it so easy to get into this ecosystem and to catch up on older games and play all the new games. Like that's that's what I love about Xbox. Yeah, I th- and the cool part is, too, so much of the things are going to be forward compatible. Like, if mm-hmm. you get a really fancy headset, they are going to be compatible. I think they're doing adapters and things because of optical is no longer part of the boxes. So there will be adapters for free, which is cool, which is nice. You know, if you've got a fancy one, use that. So you're good yep. to go. Yeah. Um, is X- I don't even know this. Is Xbox going to have a camera at all or will it support PC cameras? No. Okay. I don't know. I, I know that like, they're... they're- I'm I'm leaning towards thinking no on this one, but it could it could do that for streaming. I'm not sure. Uh, I know one of the big things you're saying is basically any Xbox game other than ones that rely on Kinect will work. So I'm thinking that Kinect is not going to work. But for a webcam or something for streaming, that might be an option. I'm going to have to look into that because I don't know offhand. Yeah, it's kind of one of those weird things PlayStation did. I mean, it's funny. Last generation, they did launch with the camera. Yeah. And that's Built no longer in, compatible. In the box. <laughs> yeah. I don't even think the adapter works. Uh, no. Because I, I sold Corey Gary Hudson uh, my Kinect adapter when I got my uh, Xbox One S. So mm. very fun times. So there you go. Uh, yep. Yeah. So it, it, if it does, I don't know, but it should support actually mouse and keyboard too. Yeah. Yeah. So any yeah, way you want to play. Yeah. yeah. It's there. Um, so with that, Mark, uh, so that's the hardware side. Um now, when it comes to the games, um, I've admitted um, the launch games that are going to be cross-gen. I kind of just wanted to focus about, and we can talk about, if we want to talk about like launch games that will be there, um, but I wanted to talk about exclusives. So if you want to talk about actual, like what games you can play la- day one that are really mm-hmm. exciting, that are new to Xbox, um, what's your standout titles? Uh, for me, it's all about Assassin's Creed Valhalla. For sure. I can't wait to play that game. I love that series and it's going to play. They've confirmed that's one of the big marketing key points with this. It's 4K and 60 frames per second. I don't think PlayStation 5 is going to hit both of those at the same time. Sounds like you're going to be able to choose either or uh, because they're marketing it as the only way to play Assassin's Creed Valhalla in 4K and 60. So uh, if you're a big Assassin's Creed fan, Xbox seems to be the way to go. Uh, They're going to be updating Gears 5, and I can't wait to see that one again. Of course, we've got the uh, Fortnite update. If you're a Fortnite fan, you're going to get ray tracing and all that cool kind of stuff that PC is already playing with. Can't wait to see how that looks and uh, if it adds anything to the game or just kind of makes it look a little prettier. Um, No Man's Sky, I believe, is going to be next gen patch day one. That's another interesting one. If you you miss that, I've been waiting. Um, And uh, games like Sea of Thieves, that kind of stuff. Like, again, games that are going to be available on Game Pass that I just want to go and check out how they're going to be looking prettier. But as far as new games, what I want to try, I think the first game going to be fired up on my Xbox will be Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Gotcha. That's right. Yeah, and, and yeah. Call of Duty will look awesome as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only problem with that game is they're charging extra for the cross-generation game. It's like 70 bucks, which is just, yeah. So there's no clear path on every game how you get the better version some will just be you'll play in backwards compatibility mode and you'll also probably get the faster load times because of the hardware itself so you get mm-hmm. to get some of that stuff i think auto hdr is one of those things too where yep. that'll play in so so there's a lot of good things that you're the games that are available on xbox one will look better on xbox series x um but there aren't going to be a lot of just only on series x uh, i think the first game that's truly only on series x is the medium that comes out in december 
And that game is going to be a powerhouse. I think that's on Game Pass as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, One thing you mentioned there before uh, that I completely forgot to mention hardware wise, if you think you're going to be downloading a ton of games, this isn't something I'm considering right away, uh, but they are releasing that Seagate hard drive. It does seem expensive right now if you're looking at it, but a comparable hard drive, the PlayStation 5, is actually a little bit more expensive. Um, So that's an option. If you want fast uh ssd speeds that are going to match the built-in hard drives you're going to be play- paying an awful lot for these hard drives but the nice thing is they are plug and play instantly doubles your storage expansion on the xbox at least uh and depending on you have a lot more flexibility on playstation 5 which is really nice um but right away i think a terabyte is going to be fine for most people unless you really don't want to manage your games but again with game pass it's so easy if you especially if you have a good internet speed um so easy to manage re-download things and and pick and choose what you're deleting and that kind of stuff um but that is an option they're very expensive but it's an option um yeah i will i will give you i will give you another option mark and actually because digital foundry is doing some great work and what they determined um for backwards compatible games Mm -hmm. is because you can play those on a um a a usb hard drive just play them off there um they found if you get a no be very clear i say this a usb 3.0 ssd so basically this is a ssd drive not a standard hard drive that's connected to usb um Mm -hmm. they found those perform in the backwards compatibility mode almost at par as mm. the internal SSD. So that's what I did. That's interesting. Yeah, okay. so I watched the video. It's great because it'll actually, they show the load times um, and the uh, down uh, the uh, transfer times to go back and forth. And um, you won't get the, op- you won't get like the optimization for the old games. You'll basically be playing them in the current backwards compatibility mode. Right. Okay. But it's still a way to play those games if you don't really care about a lot of that because it's like, oh, it's, it's, uh, what is the game I'm thinking about? Lucky's Tale. Do you, right. I, you may not need Lucky's Tale and all those <laughs> things, but you just want to play it. Um, you can do that, and the and I basically got a, a one terabyte USB SSD for about a hundred bucks. Oh, okay. That's the that was my next question. Was going to be, are they? I mean, like they're about half the price. Price, price, as, price as scaling the newer, yeah, as the internal okay. SSDs or the yeah, cards. that's really good. Yeah. So for me, that was a good deal because I'm like, I'll just do that because you know what? It's so much faster to transfer than download. And you don't have a cap. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And I'll just move things back and forth. Um, Because my friend was even asking us, I heard the new Call of Duty might take up 250 gigabytes. And I'm like, unfortunately, because it's essentially four games now, it's the multiplayer, it's Warzone, it's zombies, and the campaign. It's four different things. So they need to get better. And I think that's what they were going to do, though. Wasn't the thing, Mark, with like next gen, they were going to let you download the parts you want. Yeah, that's what I, I mentioned earlier. I said like delete what yeah. you want, the the bits and pieces. That I don't you need want I don't need Belgian. So. I don't need Korean language tracks. Right. I don't need those folks. Don't give them to me. Do you need them, Mark? The, well, I mean, Belgium would actually cover uh, French. both French and and Dutch. So uh, depending on which side you're on, you get two for the price um, of one. Exactly. Yeah. So you're really. I mean, that's that's yeah. That's it. Um, Anyway, yeah, so I, I that that is a good option. I didn't know uh, that like SSD, regular SSDs were were coming down that much in price. So that's really really good to know. Yeah, it's not an NVMe SSD. It is just a right. standard just three, uh, three SATA. Point yeah, SATA. Uh, it's connected to and basically I just bought a, a SSD like you put in your computer, and I just got a, a USB enclosure for it, so it's cheaper. Oh, but I got cool. A good deal. And there will okay. be a lot of deals on uh, like as black friday and everything so you can mm. probably find a i've seen great deals already on nvme and ssds so i think that might be an option for a lot of people that they may not have considered in the short term because those mega yeah. mega mega hard drives you find like five terabytes those things are ridiculously slow yeah. they just are yeah they're just yeah. for volume not speed uh like me <laughs> <laughs> um I, I need to work out but i can't um okay moving on to ps5 this is coming out november 12th two days later um, last time when we launched, the two was launched on the same day, I believe. Was it? Or a week later? No, Xbox was a week later. That's right. Yeah. So Xbox is beating PlayStation by two days. Kind of crazy, um, mm-hmm. which is kind of cool. Um, and the good news is, Mark, I'm getting my DualSense controller 
uh, I believe next uh, Thursday, and I'm getting Ooh. my I'm getting my uh, Pulse headset. Uh, getting that I think tomorrow. It's coming in the mail. Cool. So, yeah, so I'm excited about that. Joseph Moran already did a, a preview of both uh, both controllers. I was just gonna say, yeah. Yeah. So Joe, check out Joe's review on PlayStation stuff. If you want um, Xbox previews right now, uh, Sean Capri. <laughs> Such a great unboxing. Everybody's Holy unboxing crap. things. I was just about to unbox my little horrible Nintendo pouch I got from Club Nintendo, but that's not very exciting. <laughs> Nobody cares. But, yeah. I get my Nintendo my my Super Mario pins. I think tomorrow don't i never want to see those damn things mark i was <laughs> nintendo can't give me those pins i completed those missions uh, oh, man, that's frustrating yeah yep. i'm sure you're gonna sell them for like three hundred thousand uh, dollars and send to finish college with those 100 uh, percent. yeah uh sean's sean's unboxing on the xbox drive go go subscribe to them on youtube uh and and the ps trophy room like uh like Tom was saying earlier with joseph um both fantastic channels for for PlayStation and Xbox, but Sean's unboxing of the Xbox Series X in the back of a moving truck. Yes, folks, it is as dangerous as it sounds, and it is the most entertaining unboxing I have ever seen. When he almost kind of like drops the box at one point, and they start going over yep. speed bumps, and you can just see the fear in his face. And he's like, he has the Xbox next to him, and he's like, oh my god, I kind of forgot it was there for a second. And he's like standing upright in the back of a moving, like just, I'm spoiling a lot of things right now. But like, if you haven't seen it, you still need to see it for yourself because my descriptions are not doing it justice. It is, like I said, the most entertaining unboxing I've ever seen. It's so fantastic, and those guys are so great. So go give them a follow. And uh, Sean's wife's a photographer. Chelsea does great things. So they always put the con- the console wrapped up like a little baby, like the baby Newborn shots. Newborn babies, yeah. It's, it's yeah. pretty good. So, yeah, yeah, I'm so happy to see uh, those, those those teams get the support of those brands because they're so passionate and they put together. So um, keep up the good work. Follow them. Uh, they also have their YouTube channel now where they can watch it as well. And, Mark, I am worried, though, that the Royal Mounted Police will be <laughs> – taking sean down one day because that's going to be breaking like 85 canadian rules you know my my cousin's uh rcmp in edmonton so i'll be able to pull some strings and get sean off i'll have to take that xbox series x off you uh my friend yeah 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 no i'll make sure sean's uh sean's safe from the rcmp in uh in edmonton for sure it's it's all good i got you sean yeah, so uh, PlayStation 5, like I said, November 12th, um, this hardware is doing something a little different than Xbox. It's going a little bit more, I don't say evolutionary, it's, it's taking some step forwards in the way it looks. We have not mm-hmm. had a white PlayStation ever. Um, they've always yeah. been gray or black. Um, yeah. and well, I have the white one, but that was a special edition oh, Destiny Oh, that's right, PS4. yes. So um, when it's vertical, it looks like the Avengers Tower. When it's horizontal, <laughs> it looks like uh, Tony Stark's mansion. So there oh, you go, Mark. Good. Yeah, this is uh, which is weird because this is the place to play Spider-Man, not Iron Man. But uh, well, and, Iron yeah, Man VR. The, oh right, I forgot that was a thing. Yeah, and it's about as big as the mansion or the Avengers Tower. It's huge, folks. Uh, you need at least 16 inches of clearance uh, vertically or horizontally. That's what she said. Yes, exactly. One way or the other, and it will, and you will need a stand, which actually comes with it, so you're good to go, and it's needed uh, because it's a little bit. Uh, I said the disc-based version. If you want to get that, it's five hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. It's got a booty. It's got a booty mark. It does. It, yeah. it's got that little, yeah, the little uh, booty on it for the the uh, disc drive. Uh, $400 for the uh, digital only edition, which is very hard to come across. I was yeah. maybe the only person that actually secured one. So, and that's they, they only had one up for pre-order yeah. and you got it. Exactly. Yeah. That was for my friend, Rich. Uh, so he'll be getting that, uh, Sean Capri will be getting, uh, he'll be getting both a series X and a PS five. So, uh, I am like the, the pimp daddy. I'm like, uh, <laughs> the giver of many gifts and, and, and wishes this holiday season. So good deal. And I actually have an extra one, but I'm just keeping that. I'm going to keep the one that arrives soonest and I'll cancel the other one or cause I don't know. It's, it's cool. So, <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. It's awesome. So, um, yeah. So the two playstations, the only difference is one has a disc, one's uh, $100 more. Uh, and the weird part about it is this gets a little more difficult to understand what you do need. Um, with PlayStation, to Mark's point, 
Um, you can put an extra SSD in it, but the type of SSD um, – they haven't officially released the list of SSDs that will be compatible with it, but they are going to be more off the shelf. Like you'll have everybody and his brother eventually making uh, an SSD you can put in there. You pop off a side, you pop it in. So it should be fairly easy to do. It also will support USB hard drive storage. So like once again, you can do the same thing I mentioned with an SSD, or you can get a big old USB hard drive one way or another, and that, that will just store the games – not play them i think you can right. play the ps4 backwards compatible games off the hard drive i think maybe i think you're right uh, yeah. but i don't want to say for sure yes it is very confusing yes so um all specialty controllers will work with playstation 4 so arcade sticks things like that flight sticks arcade uh, are racing sticks or racing sticks racing <laughs> wheels racing wheels will work with it that are ps4 will work forward compatible which is good because i have a arcade stick which is neat um oh, they will work for, forward compatible too yes yes mm, so they'll interesting on, yeah because there won't be any like if a game supports a fight stick there's really no playstation 5 fight sticks yet right so and you right. won't need like some of those features of it that'll be fine um but i'm sure there will be eventually ps5 dedicated uh sticks and, and, and wheels things like that in the future um mm-hmm. the all, all of the heart like they said the headsets will also be forward compatible uh, the golds will work too um and because it has a jack right then you can use any type of uh, uh headset which is cool um let's see what else the playstation uh, this, 4 controllers though they will yes. work but only with playstation 4 games yes and one thing i wanted to find out cuz i don't even know this yet mark i don't know if dual sense will work on the PlayStation 4 games. I am assuming they do. They're essentially. The I think same. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I think they they already said that uh, certain functionality of it won't work, yes. but it will work. Uh, you know, on, on older games. So. Yeah, because I'm. Yes, I think you're safe there. I'm going to keep a DS4 around or not. I really don't care. I, right. I move on completely. Um, and uh, let's see what else. Um, oh yes. PlayStation VR is completely compatible. You need to get an adapter for your camera. Uh, and that is available now to actually secure. You just put in the serial number of your camera, you put that in the website, and you'll get it for free, similar oh, to cool. the Connect adapter that was for Xbox One S. Um, so that's good. Um, let's see. What is next that I have to remember? Oh, yes. No, this is the weird part. The new camera is not compatible with PlayStation VR, so you'll need to use your old PlayStation. I think it's because of... The way PlayStation VR works, it needs a specific type of camera. I don't know why they didn't build that into the the new camera, uh, but there is going to be a camera available. It's got tool, dual dual lenses, both HD, and apparently it's going to do some things with the removing of backgrounds and things like that. So for hmm. streaming, it's actually kind of nice to have, and it's only sixty bucks, so that's pretty. Dirty. That's kind of neat. Yeah. 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 But the camera will still work. The current camera will still work with the PlayStation for as well um let's see have i missed anything mark about like accessories i don't think so yeah the, the controller issue is still uh you know the the new controller i saw something today about the uh, the new controllers like the what are they called impulse triggers or feedback triggers or whatever it is i, I don't uh, know if it's got a name or anything it's the, just yeah the, oh, technology uh, haptic, there. Feedback. haptic feedback triggers um that looks so cool but i also did see a teardown today that uh, in a little group chat that I was in talking about this teardown, we were we were kind of concerned about the longevity of the parts because when you're pushing down on a trigger and it's pushing back at you, how much – if you're really depressing that trigger, how much tension is it going to take before it just snaps? So yeah. uh, that's one thing that I'm kind of wondering about the PS5 controllers and kind of wishing – that the PS4 controller could just work going forward because it you know might be worth, but yeah. uh, you know just uh, just be gentle with your new controllers, uh, be be delicate until they kind of figure out. Uh, I'm I'm really hoping. I've I've said before, I'm really hoping that technology takes off and is Me awesome. Too. Yeah. Um, because it it is so cool to like get that feedback from triggers, but I'm. The uh, the skeptical part of me is so worried that it's just going to be a first party gimmick and something that breaks in the controller. Um, I really hope I'm proven wrong on that one, and I hope it is like the next best thing since regular rumble became a thing and like changed uh, how controllers are made. So uh, we will see, but that is something I uh, 
yeah, think, I, I've been thinking about with the PlayStation 5 controller and slightly yeah. concerned about, but uh, yeah, the, it, it looks awesome for right now. Yeah, it's got really cool, like Mark said, haptic feedback, so it kind of causes some tension. Uh, it's the way it vibrates, the way it feels. Um, it's got a microphone in there, so it's kind of yeah. cool, actually, which is neat, so you don't actually need the headset if you don't really want to. It has a speaker built in. It actually has a second mic to take out noise reduction, which is kind of cool. <laughs> um, the... Um, uh, the, the, I mean, it's really neat that we're doing some things like this. Uh, it's supposed to have a longer battery life, uses a USB-C, so I'm hoping it does because I'll admit to do, do a shock for I always have two because I'm charging one, waiting for the to use the other one. Doesn't mm-hmm. does it's it's kind of a lame, but it's supposed to have a longer battery life. Um, and let's see. Um, so we talked about speaker, um, all those things. It does have new buttons, uh, create, which is essentially share. So mm-hmm. it's not it's not a big change in that instance. Um, but it is bigger. And they compared it. It's actually even a little bit bigger than the Xbox Series X controller. So it's a little heftier. Boy. So that's good because that was a feedback that DualShock 4 was always considered a little bit slight um, as a comparison. So we'll see. But I'm hearing good things about the controller. And that is one thing that uh, I also have to mention for the Xbox controller. If you're going to be playing a lot, either get a rechargeable battery pack or a pack of AA batteries because yes. they're still taking AA's. Uh, I am, I, I have a, a charging kit, so I'm going to be good to go. I'm, I'm guessing it's, it's going to be backwards compatible. I'm not sure though. I might have to get a new back cause it, Oh, you know. cause it does have a different like plate or something. Yeah. I don't know if it would have a different yeah. plate or something, yeah. but anyway, I, I, I'm, I, I also have a big stack of AA batteries, yeah. so I'm, I'm ready to go either way. So, uh, we'll see what happens, but, uh, yeah, um, Something to consider for the Xbox. Anyway, back to PlayStation. Yeah, uh, what yeah. Are some, so, what are some games we can look forward to playing? Uh, well, I just want to go over the headset really quick. They are doing some oh, yes. new, uh, wire, uh, 3D audio technology. The 3D Pulse headset is coming out, and I'm actually getting that. It's only 100 bucks though. So Joseph reviewed <laughs> that. He, he he has some concerns about the the quality because it's only 100 bucks versus like some of the other higher end. But mm-hmm. um, uh, he hasn't used it actually as a you know for the PlayStation it. But I'm excited to hear it. So I'm actually getting that because I have the golds. I'm going to give the golds to my son. And I will use this as my headset's going for. So there how, you go. How old are your gold headset? Uh, how, how old is that headset for you? I got it in like 2017, maybe. Okay. All right. No, mine, no, issues. Like the, no, the battery just straight up doesn't work on mine. I can plug it in. It does not mm-hmm. charge. It doesn't hold a charge. It will not turn on. And the leather around the cups mm-hmm is complete or faux leather or whatever yeah. the heck it is, whatever it's made of is peeling off like nobody's business and is disgusting. So those are just straight trash at this point. And they were like a hundred and something dollars Canadian. So the gold or um, the, was it the, the platinums? The, I think it was the gold. I think they were the, the cheap bucks. ones that fold in. They're just like kind of plastic and yeah, that's what I have. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. um, anyway, yeah, no, they were, um, yeah, they are straight trash. I love those when they were a thing. And the little USB thing yeah. would work in the, the switch. So I, I they, they were like a great dual um, yeah. opportunity headset. And uh, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm wearing the Steel Series Arctis 1 now because I, I had to get a new pair yeah. of uh, wireless headphones. Okay. Well, get whatever you want, folks. Uh, yeah. You have to buy if you don't want to. <laughs> Um, but it's great that they're going to really focus on this 3D audio, so I'm really excited to try yeah, that. I really it looks it. Awesome. It sounds yeah. awesome. And I'll, hopefully I'll remember to charge the things and actually use them rather than just use them wired. <laughs> but yeah. but, yeah. We sh- but I, from my I've heard, they will allow regular headsets to take part of that 3D audio as well, um, from my understanding. So that's very cool. But yeah, um, so it's kind of interesting because PlayStation, it kind of changed the position at first that a certain games were supposed to be only on PlayStation 5. Um so we are getting, you know, day one games, but they're also going to be day one on PlayStation 4. So we're getting, you know, Miles Morales, uh, Astrobot, or no, uh, oh, uh, Sackboy's Big Adventure. Those two will be um, coming to PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5. Obviously, they'll be better on PlayStation 5 because of those capabilities. So that's there. But there are a couple of exclusives. You're going to get Astro's Playroom that comes on every PlayStation installed. It's basically a demo that's like a five-hour demo for the DualSense controller. Very cool. I love mm-hmm. that. Um, actually, it's the same thing with uh, the PlayStation controller and the camera with Astro's Playroom and the PlayStation 4. It was very fun. My son loved it, loved playing with it, had fun. Uh, but the game that you're going to get that are going to be at launch uh, is Demon Souls, which is a remaster of the PS3 game, which probably I don't know if there's any people, many people that actually played that game. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so that's going to come out. That game looks beautiful. I've seen how it plays. It's fantastic. But it is a remake. But many people, this will be new to them. So that's there. That's uh, a launch game, which is pretty cool. Uh, another. Um, oh, let's see. What else is launching uh, with it? Am I forgetting a game? Bug Snacks. That's going to be PlayStation is- Plus. It's coming to PS4 as well, though. PS4, oh, right, yeah, right, Yeah, so right, right. Bugsnax, yeah, Bugsnax will be free. That's awesome. A launch game yeah. getting for free. Um, I swear there was one more game. Oh, it was supposed to be Destruction All-Stars. It was going to be that another. That is pushed back again, yeah. Yes, pushed back, but also going to be PS Plus free. So right. it's a good and a bad. So I can't complain. Uh, and, and just like Xbox has launch games, uh, the only game we really know that's going to be in that launch window um, that that people should really be excited about is really Ratchet and Clank. Mm-hmm. And they said early, like launch window, so that could be January or February. So that's yeah. going to be really the only other big game coming out. So, um, But you're also getting that PS4 collection for PS Plus. Yeah, right. They've, la- they've announced God four games. Out? Oh, oh, the Godfall. That's that the launch? other game. That's yeah. the launch game, okay. too. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's gonna be uh, PlayStation console exclusive and PC coming to PC, PC later. So it's actually right. exclusive on consoles on PlayStation 4, and it's PC later. Maybe it's coming to Xbox One, and they just haven't announced it yet. I don't know. I'm trying to remember. But yeah, that's the one that kind of looks like a brawler, uh, kind of a looter game where you are killing things to get better gear. I think it looks kind of cool, but that's probably going to be a game flight game for me. Yeah, it looks like a fun launch game. Absolutely. But definitely has a launch game feel. Absolutely, yeah. So I think this is a weird launch mark because there's not many games only only on these new systems. There's a lot of games that are going to launch cross platform, which we had last generation, like Black Flag. That was a cross gen game. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know though. I don't think those games look that much better cross gen that generation. They're going to look much better. Those cross gen games this generation are going to look tons better. They're going to run faster. And I'm going to say goodbye to uh, load times. That's it, right? It's it's a lot of this generation, especially starting off, is going to be. And and we, we talked about this long ago of what are we going to see? You know, show me an improvement. Show me a reason. And it seems like a lot of what we're going to be doing this first month or first few months is exactly that we're going to be seeing the benefit of ssds of low, you know no no load times better audio better visuals uh on old games that we're used to playing so i can't wait to fire up gears of war i already mentioned fortnite um there's there's going to be so many games that we've played prior to uh to this new generation of games that we are going to go back to or play for the first time i can't wait uh we've we've mentioned we wanted to start up hellblade before hellblade 2 comes up and now that i have an xbox ready to go i think i might fire that up here first on an original xbox one oh yeah and then really get into it once the series x comes in two weeks just to do that little comparison and then, you know, probably finish the game on the Series X. So that's another one I'm looking forward to playing close to uh, close to that console launch. So, yeah, I think we've been saying, you know, show me, show me, show me. And uh, and I think going back and playing these games, I think that's going to be the way that they show. So I'm not I'm not too put out by it that it's, nope. you know, there's not a huge exclusive launch lineup or anything. Um, it's it's kind of a cool generation in that that regard. And the first time I think we've ever seen that much of a a push for go back and play your old games because we guarantee they're going to be better. Absolutely. And and this is both systems will have their biggest library of available games ever. Um, yeah. If you own Game Pass um, and you've had games with gold, if you have PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now, you essentially have hundreds of games that are there just for free. But then anything you already bought on ps4 and xbox one uh and you can go back to 360 and the 35 games that are <laughs> the original xbox go there yeah. as well yeah yeah so i mean you will not and you know if you're new to this i just can't imagine like my friend he missed out on xbox one and think of how many games now he'll be able to go forward so it's, it's exciting incredible. times yeah, yeah it's, it's great uh so hopefully everybody got their console if you do not keep trying they'll come back in stock uh, just watch, just follow Wario64 on Twitter. Mm-hmm. It'll be taken care of. 
Yes. So, so hopefully, folks, you're prepared now. Uh, by the time you listen to this, this will be Wednesday, post the election in the United States. So, uh, good luck. I hope everybody's okay. But then you're essentially going to be a week away from Xbox Series X and about nine days from PlayStation 4. So mm-hmm. get ready, folks, and enjoy the ride. But Mark, you're listening uh, on my birthday. Yeah, but if pe- people actually want to win a next gen console, uh, they can do that by helping out a great charity with a great group of people, and that's Phoenix Overdrive Extra Life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 25 bucks. They, uh, there's a link in our notes that will tell you how to get there. But for 25 bucks, you could win a PlayStation 5 Disc Edition, Xbox Series X, or Switch Lite. This is for Extra Life, and this goes proceeds go to benefit the Mohawk Valley Health System, Children's Miracle Network Hospital. Phoenix Na- Overdrive Nation is fantastic, and we promise to bring Lee and his wife on the show eventually as well. Absolutely. Yeah, that's uh, th- they're doing some great stuff, and uh, – the opportunity for $25 to win a PS5 disc edition, an Xbox Series X or a Switch Lite, that is that is just fantastic, especially because you're helping kids. So go check them out. Absolutely. So, Mark, once they're done checking out Extra Life, who else should they check out? They should follow us uh, at, at co underscore op mode underscore pod or T Oxtra or the underscore canardian uh you can also follow the secret friends unite facebook group and page or if you'd like to give your thoughts on next generation uh console launches games reviews feelings whatever you want you can give us a call at 872-225-2496 and leave a three minute or less voicemail that we can play or at least comment on on the show uh also i have some exciting news woohoo as of today, we are approved on uh, what Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher, Google Podcasts, uh, still pending. <laughs> I, I don't know why Google's taking so long. I thought Apple was going to take the longest, to be honest. Um, but anyway, we have a solo feed. So if you would like to break off uh, from the Secret Friends Unite Master Feed, which now has Secret Friends Unite Co-op Mode and Code 47, um, Co-op Mode is the first of those shows to get a solo feed. But I think we're going to be working on breaking Code 47 out as well. Uh, I think that's something Charlie's interested in. So uh, we're, we're going to be talking about that. But I have basically I've set up uh, that stuff over on the canardian.com. So if you want to go over there, you can get the RSS feeds or just uh, just search um, on your podcast player of choice. If you have any podcast player suggestions that I need to go submit the RSS feeds to, please let me know. I am working on getting it to uh, to everything that Secret Friends Unite is currently on. Uh, I also just launched a new show with Ribo, my new co-host. Uh, that is an Apple tech podcast called iGuys, which also launched today. So it's a very exciting day for me launching uh, two new podcast feeds and getting to record uh, this show as always. So um yeah, it's very exciting. Go give us a subscribe and a listen. Or if you want to just get all of the Secret Friends goodness, just keep it right here like usual. I'm so excited for Mark's Apple podcast because I'll probably just be commenting the whole time saying, <laughs> I know so much more. Uh, what happened to the <laughs> Apple Newton? Come on, man. Give me right. more. Yep. The Pippin. Yeah, That's yeah, something absolutely. we could talk about on this one. I'll get Ribo on this show and we oh, can actually talk about the Pippin. Oh, that's fantastic. I love that. Yes. So thanks for joining us. Follow the podcast. Make suggestions on who you'd like to have on the podcast because we always like guests as well. And with that, Mark, thank you. But you need to go to bed and get some sleep, buddy. (laughs) Yes, that would probably be beneficial. And folks, remember, it's always better to game together. There's so many new video game consoles coming out. I'm going to save up my allowance and buy them all. You might want to think twice about that, kiddo. Back in the 90s when you bought a new system, it was basically ready to go. 
But those days are gone by, so buddy, don't be that guy. You wanna be the first in line, but I say no, 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 no. They won't have near enough games, no matter how great they seem. It takes at least a year or two before they're round in full steam. Yes, it's a dirty little trick, so you gotta be staunch, kid. Don't ever buy a console at launch. I'm being serious, do not ever buy a console at launch. But the video game companies promise all these great games and features within the first year. Sure, just like presidential candidates. They'll say anything to get your vote, the way game companies just want you to buy their console. Didn't you want a new Wii U? More like PU. PS4. Oh, give me more. Xbox One. Xbox done. Yeah. Uh, what? The OS will be a mess, so you gotta be staunch, kid. Don't ever buy a console at launch. Now sing it with me. Do not, not ever buy a console at launch. launch. That's right, and even if they release a picture-perfect device, you know that six to twelve months later they'll be dropping the price. Ain't that some crap? It's a trap, so you got to be staunch, child. Don't ever buy a console at launch or Apple product, but don't ever, never, never buy a modern gaming console at launch. Don't try it, don't you buy that console at launch. Yeah! <laughs>